there is a tall and stout plaksha tree there you will have to enter the mortal realm by exiting the tree lord shiva said why pa why not from a cave or a glacier why is saraswati supposed to emerge from the tree only oh that's a lovely question dearest granddad used to say that the vadava was born from pipalada's fiery penance and because pipalada had received his sustenance from the holy plaksha lord shiva blessed her to get released into the mortal world emerging from the holy plaksha tree near sage uttankas ashramam located amidst the shivalik mountain ranges in the himalayas appa what is a plaksha tree the same tree that fed baby pipalada pa the ashwatha or the fig tree now back to the story celestial drums and conch shells resounded loudly and the auspicious sounds filled the entire world devi saraswati dressed in white garments adorned with white sandalwood paste and wearing a garland of stars shone like the full moon radiating her own brilliance she illuminated the entire universe originating from the plaksha tree she picked up the fire and ran gracefully as a river into the plains of central india it is said that she met a great mountain called krithasmara on the way appa who is krithasmara oh another long story remind me to come back to this at the end okay now let us complete the story whenever she could bear the fire no more devi saraswati would go underground and when she would recover she would return back to the surface Meanwhile there were five sages who had mastered the Vedas who were doing severe penance in the Prabhasa Kshetra called as Harina Vajra Nyankuhu and Kapila they requested Devi Saraswati's assistance to culminate their penances while holding the scorching anala she consented to them by flowing into five distributaries called Harini Vajrini Nyanku Kapila and Saraswati she finally reached the coasts and presented the vadavanala to the ocean appa where is the prabhasa kshetra pa current day somnath in gujarat dearest it is one of the oldest jyotirlinga points in india devi saraswati tells the vadavanala o holy fire behold the mighty ocean that roars before you pleased with devi saraswati's countenance the fire spoke Ask me any boon you want O divine maiden I am so pleased by your dedication Devi Saraswati remembered Mahavishnu's promise and asked the question back to him in her mind through a prayer O Janardana I don't desire anything I am already grateful to have completed the task that was decreed to be done by the surabhis What boon do I ask of the vadavanala ओ भुवनेश्वरा <laughs> Zoom conference <laughs> Yes I believe it is Anyhow Lord Mahavishnu replied urgently Oh benign devi this is the right moment whilst he consumes the mighty ocean ask the fire to hold a needle like face a face whose mouth is shaped as fine as a needle Devi Saraswati asked the fire accordingly to consume the water slowly with a needle like mouth and the fire granted the boon as the fire entered the mighty ocean the deva sagara meanwhile felt himself getting vaporized by the scorching embers granddad used to say that lord mahavishnu granted the boon of being everlasting and perennial to the sagara to counter this phenomenon at this time after so many yugas it is said that the vadavanala is still consuming the sagara but the sagara continues to remain perennial and unchanging satasma stadvacha shrutva samprahrishtatu pavakah dhasyami te varam bhadre yathe ಪ್ರಾಕ್ತಯಸ್ವನಸ್ಮಾರಣಾತ್ಮಲೋಚನ 
दृष्ट सवात्मसंस्ता देव जनादन स्मृतमात्र सरस्वत्या परिस्त्रिभुवनेश्वर मनो दृष्ट्या विलोक्या सातमस्तमच्युत वाणवो यति वरमहम तम प्राथयामि कि ततस्तेन हृदय स्थेन प्रोक्ता देवी सरस्वती प्राथनीय वरो भद्रे सूची वक्तरात ततस्तव्या यदि मे म वर प्रद तत सूची मुखो भूवा पिबापो महाबल मुक्न तत्न सूची वेद सम घटि का पूरण यपौ तदनम जलम Devi Saraswati is then said to have used the same bronze vessel to give argya from her own waters to Lord Shiva at the Prabhasa Kshetra as a token of gratitude to he who protected her hands as she carried the scorching fire. This is the reason the deity at the sacred Jyotirlinga site of Somnath is called Argyeshwara as well. Oh So the story starts at Tunganath and ends at Somanath. What an epic tale. What a lovely story, pa. Yes, Suchi Mukha is the symbolism in this story. When ultimately faced with anger, reduce the size of the mouth and increase the size of your breath. Reduce the size of the mouth? Huh? What does that mean, pa? what it means is stop speaking when you are feeling angry and breathe more this is the core symbolism in the story we do the exact opposite isn't it we breathe in short gasps and we speak out fully when we are angry you see when we feel angry we lose our awareness and because there is no awareness we speak whatever comes to our mind no filters this unnecessarily hurts the listener it is not wrong to show anger but awareness needs to be there hence we have to breathe more with awareness we are free to show any emotion if anger is needed we can show it in a contained manner this will ensure the communication produces the right outcome suchi mukha is both a symbolism and a pranayama see lord shiva presented devi saraswati with the bronze vessel to contain the vadavanala similarly our service to humanity and our love for others will contain our anger and give us our awareness when you breathe in and out in this manner anger is averted and awareness is regained did you get all of that yes pa okay now you can appa wait kritasmara you asked me to remind you ha ah, yes kritasmara but let us fully digest pipalada story first isn't it and then we can hear it first on ancient anecdotes on your favorite podcast streaming providers tune in every week for a brand new episode